Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel, and welcome back to my channel. I know that I just said that twice, but I actually have not been able to sit down and film for you guys for a couple of weeks, so I'm very excited to be back. I mentioned here on an Instagram briefly that I had kind of a random back injury towards the end of this month, and it took me out for two weeks straight. Any of you that have ever had back problems, that have thrown your back out, or any of you that have chronic back pain, my heart goes out to you because there is very little that you can do without a functioning back other than lay flat on your back and watch a lot of Netflix. So I'm so excited to be back with you guys today and what better way to kick things off than with my monthly favorites. Before we get into it, welcome to any of you that are new. I hope that you'll stick around, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and now let's go ahead and get into what I've been loving throughout the month of May. Let's start with the makeup and first off is a foundation. Now I feel like I have started every favorites video for the last three or four months with a new foundation. I've just been trying out so many foundations and I found so many good ones. I will mention how this one compares to some of the other ones I've talked about recently because I think each of those foundations kind of serves a different purpose and maybe works for a different person or preference so I'll kind of compare them to each other but first off this one this is the Sephora 10 hour wear perfection foundation. I picked this up during the VIB sale and I am so happy with this foundation. I just really love how this works for me. It does everything that I want a foundation to do. It lasts really well on my skin, it has a very good coverage to it. I would say it's medium to kind of high medium. And the finish of this is a kind of satin finish that leans a little bit more on the hydrating kind of dewy side. I've really been enjoying this foundation. It's a very quick foundation to apply, which I love a foundation that I can just kind of slap on, head out the door and know that it's gonna look good all day. So I'm gonna compare this to a couple other foundations that I've really been loving throughout the last couple months. First off, I'm gonna compare to the one that I think is the most similar to it as far as finish goes and coverage goes and it is the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation. Still absolutely love this foundation. This one is actually a little bit cheaper. This one I think is different in that this is a little bit more liquidy and a little bit more buildable. That can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're looking for from your foundation. I'm going to pump these on the back of my hand really quickly so you can kind of see what I'm talking about in the differences that I'm kind of trying to describe. So here is the Sephora one, and this is the L'Oreal one. You will probably quickly see, you can see this one's already kind of starting to run. It's a much more liquidy, thin formula. It's definitely not quite as thick. And when I say thick, I don't think that this feels heavy on the skin. It just has a little bit more of a thickness to it that gives you quicker coverage. So I would say the L'Oreal one's a little bit more of a flexible foundation because it can be light to medium coverage, but if you do two layers, it can definitely be more of a medium to kind of full coverage as well. But both of these, once they are dried, have a very similar finish. I do think the Sephora one feels a little bit more hydrating than the L'Oreal one. I wouldn't call this a drying foundation on me, but I definitely have to make sure that my skin is very well moisturized. Another one I want to compare this one to is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Foundation. This is one of the most repurchased foundations that I have in my collection. I love this foundation. I think it's fantastic. It's a little bit thicker as well. You can see it right there. They do kind of remind me of each other out of the tube. This one, however, is more of like a hydrating cream kind of finish to me. So in order of dewiness, I would say these three line up like this. This one is definitely a solid satin skin-like finish. It doesn't have any dewiness to it, but it's also not matte. This one has a little bit more dewiness to it, the Sephora one, and then the Milani Conceal and Perfect, I would say, is the most hydrating of the three. I actually like all of these foundations, but that's just kind of how they're all a little bit different. Now, the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation, this kind of stands in a league of its own because this is definitely a very dewy foundation. If you are not someone that is into dewy or glowy foundations, I would steer clear of this one. Love this foundation, still one of my favorites, but again, it just kind of depends on what kind of makeup look I'm going for. So kind of to go along with that is this beauty sponge right here. This is the L'Oreal Beauty Sponge. It is dirty. I washed it right before I used it again today. Oh, and by the way, I am wearing this Sephora foundation today in case you were wondering what I'm wearing on my face or what this looks like on my face. That is the only foundation that I'm wearing today along with a concealer that I will get to in just a minute. But I applied it with this sponge. I have been loving this sponge lately. It's just such a good sponge from the drugstore. The thing I like the most about this sponge other than just the fact that it is so, so soft and so bouncy is its longevity. This one just lasts a lot longer. Love this one. It washes up so well. I think if you're looking for a good drugstore sponge and you haven't tried this one out yet, highly recommend this. Moving on to something that kind of goes along with that as well. I have quite a few complexion products this month, but next up is a concealer by e.l.f. This is their 16-hour camel concealer. I've heard a lot of people talking about this thing. I picked this up kind of on a whim at Target about three and a half weeks ago, and I love this concealer. I think especially for the price, this is such a great concealer. When it comes to price, I hear a lot of people say, you know, it doesn't matter what the price tag is. If it's good, it's good. If it's not good, it's not good. But price is a huge consideration for me, and I definitely give 
companies and products bonus points if they're able to do something well at an affordable price. And this is absolutely one of those products. This is a really good concealer, has really good coverage. It does remind me quite a bit of Tarte's Shape Tape, but not nearly as drying. This one has the same amount of coverage, but it doesn't quite set down and dry down as much as the Tarte one does. This is the only concealer that I've been using lately, and I've been really, really happy with it. I will say if we're comparing formula to formula and just kind of throwing price out the window, I would probably still prefer my Too Faced formula over this one. I think that one's just even a smidge more hydrating than this one is, while still giving really good coverage but this is awfully close to that one and the price difference is significant. This is outstanding. It's restored my faith in e.l.f. And by that I mean e.l.f. was a company that started out selling one dollar makeup and I recognize that it's impossible for any company to put out good products and still sell them for a dollar but some of their products lately have just been getting really high priced but with this one they kind of reined the price back in and I applaud them for the awesome product they were able to come out with and put it out for five dollars. I think that's absolutely amazing. And moving from a $5 concealer, let's jump right into a $50 face product. <laughs> it's the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I love this stuff. It is a beautiful product. And I have to say this, I am not someone that often falls in love with really high-end makeup. I mean, one, I don't try really high-end makeup very often, but I'm just very particular about spending money on high-end makeup because I feel like it has to be something extra special. This, I feel like it is something extra special. I have never tried anything quite like this in my life. I know a lot of you guys are eager for me to do a comparison on these two products right here. This is the Milani Soft Focus Glow, which I've heard, I think, two or three people mention that these two are kind of dupes for each other. I can't make any definitive statements about that yet. I've really been focusing only on using this one lately because I really want to know how I feel about this product before I compare it to something else. But I want to try and show you guys on the back of my hand what these look like. Here's the Hollywood Flawless Filter right there. Seriously, if you guys are somewhat considering this product, before you decide to purchase it or not, I recommend going into a Sephora and just swatching this on the back of your hand because there's something about the way this product feels that is very luxurious. I mean, this feels so emollient and just moisturizing and creamy. It just feels like a gorgeous facial cream, but it has some luminosity to it. You can see that shine right there. Here's what I've noticed with the Milani one. If you can see when I squeeze it out, and I don't know if this is just because of the way that it's packaged, but I often find that this one tends to separate a little bit. So I get like chunks of the glittery product and then chunks of like an oily sort of cream. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine when products do that. Once you blend it in, I think that they're somewhat similar to each other, but I have to say you guys, the Milani one, definitely does not feel quite as luxurious as the Charlotte Tilbury one does, which I think makes sense because there's a massive price difference between these two. Still, I'm gonna give these two a shot because I recognize that this is a crazy expensive product. I don't even know as much as I love this thing, this is still something I don't wanna use every single day because of how much it costs. And it's not something that I would just repurchase every couple of months because this is seriously expensive. I forgot to mention I am wearing this on my face today so you can kind of see it. I applied it right here on top of my foundation. You can kind of see just this sort of soft luminosity that I have here on my cheeks. I also have it on the front of my nose. I put a little bit on my chin. If you're a little bit older and you still like the idea of doing a highlighter but highlighters just are a little bit too much for you, I'm telling you if you have it in the budget this is a beautiful beautiful product. I have absolutely been loving this thing. Next up is a, another thing from the Sephora cell. I just realized that I have three things from that Sephora cell that made it into this month's favorites. That's pretty amazing and I feel like also kind of sucks because I hate to recommend high-end products because I am not someone that often buys high-end. But you guys, I'm telling you, people have been telling me this for years. Hourglass is a special brand and I have to say this little bronzer right here in all of its tiny glory is glorious. I think this is such a beautiful, beautiful product. My only regret with this, which I think I've said about three times, is that I didn't pick up the full size because this thing is just so tiny. I'm almost hesitant to reach for it because I feel like it's going to be gone so fast, but this is the only product that I'm wearing on my cheek today. The only color, the only bronze that you see on my cheeks is from this bronzer, and it's absolutely stunning. It gives you just such a healthy looking bronze. The way this looks on the skin reminds me of the way that a cream product looks on the skin, but it's not a cream. It just has the most perfect amount of luminosity to it. I really enjoy this. It looks incredible on the cheeks. I'm almost disappointed that I love this so much because now I feel like I still want some things from Hourglass and I was hoping that once I tried this, I'd realize eh, it's not that great. We can check Hourglass off the list and I don't have to spend my money on Hourglass anymore. But now I feel compelled 
to try out some of their other things. So if you have a higher end budget, I have to say, I think this is worth the $25 that I paid for it. The next thing that I have for you guys is also a high end makeup product. Man, what is happening to me? But this one, I have an alternate that's super affordable that I will share at the end of this video, but I have to share this. It's the Huda Beauty Obsessions Palette in Smoky Obsessions. I don't think I've ever mentioned these palettes in a favorites video before, but these are definitely some of my favorite eyeshadows in my collection. These Huda Beauty Obsessions palettes I think are fantastic. The quality is amazing. They pack a punch. I think that's the best way to describe them because they're so tiny. Nine shadows doesn't sound like a lot, but what you can get out of them is really incredible. These are only $24 from Sephora, which I think for what you're getting and the quality that you're getting is a great price. Love this one specifically because you get a good variety in here. You have a couple of warmer bronzy colors, but then you have all these beautiful beautiful cool tones. You have a lot of different finishes. You have this silver that's just ultra reflective and beautiful for your lid. A nice soft pink in here. I used this in my recent Get Ready With Me. I loved how that look turned out and I actually used this recently on my niece. I did her bridal pictures and I also did her bridal makeup which was so fun by the way. But I used this eyeshadow palette and it gave the most perfect bridal kind of everyday smoky eye that I think looks great on any bride. However, I want to say if you don't have the budget for that one, if you're looking for a good eyeshadow palette and your budget's like five bucks, then try this one out. This is the new Awakening palette from Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild's packaging always is terrible, but if you don't care about packaging and you're just all about the performance of the products, these shadows perform really well. You get similar kind of cool tone browns in here. You get the soft pink for the lid. You get the nice black. You get this kind of purpley shade right here. And then you also get a burgundy in here. I love this burgundy color. It is so pretty if you kind of blend this into your crease and add a touch of black or this dark brown. So stunning. This is a great palette for $4.50. I would not call these exact dupes for each other, but the looks that you can get out of them are quite similar. A couple of non-beauty favorites to share with you guys really quickly. Last month I talked in my favorites video about a nail polish that I found at Walmart for $1.98. These little guys right here, these are the LA Colors Color Last nail polishes, and I want to come in with a little bit of an update. I think what makes these nail polishes so special is this top coat right here, because I tried them without the top coat, and they definitely weren't as shiny, and they did not last quite as long. And I have to say, you guys, my nails right now, I'm going to insert a close-up right here for you guys, which I don't know if you'll be able to see them in detail. I painted these four days ago, and I have been doing so much cleaning lately. I've been doing dishes. I've had my hands in dishwater. I've had my hands like scrubbing baseball pants in a sink with hot water, which usually destroys my nail polish. I've also been like scraping stuff off of countertops. I mean, these look incredible for four days of rugged abuse, which my nails, they get a lot of abuse because I never remember to wear gloves when I'm doing housework. These are so great for $1.98. I also wanted to update you guys on some colors. Last month I shared with you guys some bolder colors. I have some neutrals this month that are, I think, even more perfect for the fingernails specifically. This one right here is the color Love. This is the one I'm wearing on my fingernails today. It's kind of a white-based pink. You do have to apply a couple of coats of this one, as in like two to three, otherwise it looks a little bit streaky, but I love the color of this one if you're in into that kind of almost white looking nail. But this one right here, I equally love. This is the color Eternal. This is a great color for any of you that either don't have a lot of time to spend painting your nails because with this one, you do have to wait for each coat to dry. But this color right here, something about this on the nails, it has kind of an undertone to it that sort of matches the color of your bare nail. So if you just do one or two coats of this, it doesn't look streaky. This is a very user-friendly color because I think if you're not very good at painting your nails, if you're a little sloppy and you get a little bit on the sides, you're not really gonna see it. So, but the finished color of this is just such a beautiful nude. Next, I wanna talk about these earrings right here. These are quite bold earrings. I'm not one to often wear bold earrings, but on occasion, I love a good statement earring. I just picked them up earlier in the month. I wanna say I got these the first week of May. Got these at Target. These are from, I can't remember the name of the brand, but it's something by Bobble Bar that Target now sells. And I have to say, these ones specifically I got on the clearance rack. So if they're still available, I will link them below. I believe I pay like five or six dollars for these ones. But not necessarily these ones specifically, but just that brand has so many adorable statement earrings at Target. So if you like a good statement earring and 10 to $12 is in your budget, check out Target because I was impressed with the selection of jewelry they've had. It had been a while since I had checked out Target's jewelry selection and I was very impressed with the variety that they had. Not just these ones, they had a lot of really cute jewelry there. Couple more things to share with you guys. Next up is this one right here. This is a lotion. This is the Eucerin Advanced Repair Cream. So I picked this up after several months back. I want to say back in January. I kind of binge watched Dr. Dre here on YouTube, which a lot of you had told me about her. She has really great knowledge on skincare. And one of the things that I learned from her channel that she seemed to talk about very regularly is how much she loved using 
a rich cream as a body moisturizer. So I used to use the Cetaphil cream and that was actually something I used mainly as like an under eye cream or just on areas that I needed extra moisturization. So like my elbows and my knees, my feet. Ran out of that one. Realized that as I was looking through Walmart, that one actually doesn't have ceramides in it, which she had mentioned is something that you really need in your moisturizer. So I saw this one in my Walmart. It was actually a little bit cheaper than the Cetaphil and the CeraVe one that she recommended. But this one does have ceramide three in it. So I thought I would give this one a try. I believe I paid like eight or nine dollars for this tub of cream, which is actually a pretty good price for these. These can be a little bit expensive. But I have been thoroughly enjoying this thing. This is a great cream. It's a very different feeling than the Cetaphil one that I used to use. That one's definitely a heavy cream. This one is definitely a lot more light, but you can tell this is still a cream. It gives intense hydration. I actually been using this on my face in the nighttime and even under my eyes during the day. I would recommend this for anyone that needs something heavy for their body or if you need something even for your face and you have very dry skin, try this thing out. I've been really happy with this and I feel like if you pick this up intending to try it out on your face and if it didn't work for your face and maybe was a little bit too heavy, you could certainly still use this all over your body. I just think it's a really good all around moisturizing cream and I've never heard anyone talk about it. So the last thing I have to share with you guys is very random. I've never mentioned this here on my channel before for, but my husband who is an engineer by trade he has kind of a side business that he started oh gosh has it been like a year I think it's been almost a year now but he's been trying out his hand in selling things on Amazon I know you guys are thinking to yourselves oh boy here we go but I have to say you guys Father's Day is just around the corner and I don't know about you guys but I this sounds terrible. I hope that you're not watching this dad or honey, but I hate finding Father's Day presents. If you have someone that you've been married to for a long time or a father or father-in-law that you've been buying Father's Day gifts for for say 15, 20 years, you can only buy a man so many watches and cologne and socks. But my husband sells these grilled baskets on Amazon. These things are incredible. You can cook just about anything inside these, but what we love these especially for is cooking your side dish alongside, if you are if you eat meat, your meat. So typically what we'll do with these is we'll, we'll get our meat all prepared. If we're doing chicken or if we're doing burgers, we'll get them on the grill. We'll leave a little corner of the grill open for this and then we'll fill it with like, we usually will do potatoes. That's our favorite thing to do, but we've also done zucchini in here. You can do like tomatoes and mushrooms. You can basically put any sort of side dish or vegetable in here. You can do asparagus. You can just spray it, throw your veggies in here, put a little bit of salt and pepper on them. And the great thing about this is when your meat is done, your veggies are usually done right along with it. So you get your whole meal on the grill. And you guys, these make veggies and everything taste so much better. Now I know that this makes me completely biased. I'm going to fully admit that, but I have to say you guys, I really think this is something that any, I mean, not just a man in your life, but I'm just thinking specifically of Father's Day, but anyone that loves to grill, I think this is such a good accessory for the grill, especially for the summertime. So if this sounds like something that would interest you or someone in your life that you're wanting to buy for, I will put the link down below. I think he sells these for about $20 on Amazon and I do have a 10% off coupon. So I'll include that link and that coupon code down below. Again, no pressure here, you guys. Just if you know someone that is into this kind of thing and you're looking for a good Father's Day gift or just a good summer gift, we absolutely love ours. And that is it for my favorite from the month of May. As always, I love hearing what things you guys have been loving throughout the last month. What has been your most used product or what kind of makeup look have you really been going for lately? Have you been going for just like moisturizer and mascara? I would love to know in the comments below. I also want to say thank you to those of you that commented on my last video that I uploaded. That was a hard video to upload. I actually almost didn't upload it because as I was editing that video, I thought to myself, okay, this sounds a little whiny. Like I sounded a little bit negative in that video and a part of me was very self-conscious to put that up, but I so appreciate your guys' response. I loved hearing all of your insights, but it just made me realize how fantastic you guys are. I appreciate you guys so much. I hope that you guys know that. Thank you guys again. I hope that you have a great start to your summer or if it's winter where you're living. Thanks for watching today. If you're not subscribed again, I'm going to remind you again, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye. And if you were wondering how I got all this body in my ponytail, it's fake. I have a clip right here. You put a clip in your ponytail underneath, if you have really thick hair. Like I have a ton of hair, which is why I can do this. But I put my hair in a ponytail, lift it up, put a clip right there. Oh, I just broke it. Dang it. And there we go. The perfect ponytail. Throw a clip underneath. I'm spinning so much when I'm talking. There are all these spots on my mirror and I'm guessing those are probably all from spit. That's kind of disgusting.